Connecticut's weather station, WTIC News Talk 1080. It is, oh, wait, I got to stop here for a minute because Alden Davis is here today. And we'll uh, back to our brief musical interlude coming up here in just a moment. Uh, Alden Davis is here. Hi, Alden. How are you? It's been a couple of weeks. Good morning, See boy. You. It's great to be back. All right, brother man. Uh, so, what are we dealing with today? Well, Dr. Nett and I just led a workshop with senior management on becoming a conflict competent team. Ooh. Good group of people, all very experienced, but conflict. Dealing with differences was keeping them from solving problems, and this was slowing down critical tasks. It became very apparent to me in the workshop that a group's ability to deal with conflict is a critical skill set. Want to be more effective at work, in your family? We'll be here after Weather and Sports as we explore the curse of conflict. Right here at WTIC, your coaching connection. You know, it occurs to me, this is something that I came across, but I, I used to have a saying, it's called cooperation without complaint leads to joy without restraint. <laughs> so just just so you'll know that, that's... <laughs> That's, I think you it was know, Stalin who said yeah, that. Yeah, words of wisdom just come rolling well, out. Well, there you go. I, I put that in a column once I wrote it. I don't know why. <laughs> it's 713 WTIC News Talk 1080. Oh. Alden, by the way, uh, we're getting this for free, which is pretty good. Uh, MyValueTree.com, by the way, is the website, and you can go check that out. But Alden now, you know, you worked for Pratt & Whitney for 107 years, and now you're kind of in private practice, yeah. so to speak, along with uh, Annette. Yeah, isn't it wonderful? And you guys go and you do seminars. And, you know, you're away for – you're away a lot. You've been to China. You've been everywhere else in the world, right? Yeah, it's I've been everywhere, man. Oh, <laughs> who did that song? Tom Hall? I can't remember. All right. Anyway, here's Alden. So let's go to school, guys. Wow. All right. All right. All right. So good to be Cheery. with you on this wonderful Saturday morning. Got your donut and coffee? Wait. Uh, uh, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Ready to focus a few minutes on being more effective in your life? Today, our star power coaching focuses on the curse of conflict. Here's the premise. Your inability to deal with conflict robs you, your family, your business, your town of its potential. Conflict can be described as a serious disagreement or argument. It can be a strife for mastery, a hostile encounter, a fight, a battle, a prolonged struggle, a divergence of opinions. Sounds tiring. Just saying it, yeah. No wonder people don't like conflict. Conflict starts when there's a difference. Think of it like two cars trying to move into the same lane at the same time. Conflict. Two different ideas trying to occupy the same space. Conflict. We do not experience spontaneous conflict. Yep, here we are, Ray, just hanging out in the studio on a nice Saturday morning, and bam, I get brushed by the spirit of conflict, and I go off on you for no reason. It doesn't work that way. The root cause is a problem, and conflict is one approach for solving the problem. There is so much talk about all the conflict in the country. We are a country divided. Okay, but I still cannot figure out what the problem statement is that has everyone so upset. Is the problem statement, does centralized government or decentralized government create the best future? You know, conflict theory put forth by Karl Marx Claim society is in a state of perpetual conflict due to competition for limited resources. It holds that social order is maintained by domination and power rather than consensus and conformity. Okay. Well, maybe the problem statement is, is nationalism or globalism in the best interest of our people? Or maybe the concept of our people is antiquated. So the question today is, are you more interested in solving the problem or winning? If all you want to do is win, well, then knock yourself out and use conflict as your process. Oh, did you catch what Coach just did? I'm offering for your consideration that problem solving is the what and the use of conflict is a how. This should beg the question, are there other ways to solve problems without the use of conflict? Well, you bet. Oh, here, let me pull out my standard issue memory jogger published by Goal QPC. Oh, here, take a look. Yeah. Go ahead. Well, we could use Pareto charts, cause and effect diagrams, run charts, stratification. We can use histograms, scatter diagrams, control charts, my personal favorite, and force field analysis. All these processes help us have a fact-based discussion about the problem. Wow. 
They shift us from emotionality to critical thinking. The reason people don't like to use a fact-based problem-solving process is that it takes their personal agenda out of the equation. For many of you, when you engage in a problem emotionally, you may end up either in anger or apathy. Dr. Annette would encourage us to gain more insight into ourselves through the use of research conducted by Thomas and Kilman. Oh, look, Ray. Here's he brought in a lot right? of these. I wish we had a camera in here so you guys could see all this stuff. <laughs> well, through the use of their conflict mode assessment, you are compared to a database of 59,000 people to see how you stack up in dealing with differences. Their model looks at the relationship between how important the issue is and how friendly I feel towards you. Within this framework, we can find five different ways for dealing with differences. Okay. Competing, collaborating, compromising, avoiding, and accommodating. Or if you want to look at that. Number four is for me, actually. Well, so so when I took this um, this assessment, I found out that I was statistically low on compete. I was statistically high on collaborate and statistically high on avoid. This meant that when in a conflictual situation, as long as you wanted to work through to a mutually agreeable solution, I would have the energy to do it. But the minute I saw your goal was to win, I would walk away and avoid because I valued harmony more than winning. Okay. Five modes are available, and I was stuck in two. Armed with this insight, I could now be more selective in my response to problems. Remember, the star power goal is to be the most effective version of you. People around you need help in how differences get resolved. You can be very valuable at home, at work, when you can model the behaviors that guide others. You know, back in the late 60s, a third grade instructor in Riceville, Iowa, named Jane Elliott, set out to help her students understand the power of discrimination. She divided the group based on an attribute over which they had no control, eye color. First day, the brown-eyed children had all the privileges, playground time, drinking fountain, teacher's attention, and they excelled at their assignments like flashcards. During that same day, the performance of the blue-eyed children dropped, and there were fights with the brown-eyed children. The next day, when the roles were reversed, blue-eyed children's performance improved and brown eyes dropped. What was their reason? They were so preoccupied with being in the out-group, and all that meant their minds could not focus on the task at hand. And so it is when conflict divides us. Our minds lose focus on the task as we puzzle what is happening. We avoid those with whom we have the problem. We withdraw from engaging and move into self-protection. At work, the business slows down, making us less competitive. At home, well, people don't want to be there. (laughs) Separate bedrooms. Okay. (laughs) This is the curse of conflict. Commit today to equip yourself with the skills to be conflict competent. These are our days. I'm Coach Davis. You know, you've been doing these things for like 10 years, something like that. Well, and Annette's been running these uh, full weekend workshops. She's had hundreds of students go through well, why, on you conflict. Know, you got to put these in a book. It's pretty interesting stuff. <laughs> well, it is. Well, some of it, you know, what you're saying is one thing is reading it is, is you know, a way to really soak it in. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Mm-hmm. By the way, this memory jogger, holy moly. That is the best little. <laughs> I, I don't understand a bit of it. Ooh. Got Venn diagrams. And yeah. You got you, man. You got flow charts. You got everything. It's all there. Oh, but that would lead us to a fact-based discussion. No, we don't want that. No.